Hey everyone, Classic Burning Crusades item database contains more than 26 thousand items. Now, most of those items are just plain regular gear items, consumables, reagents, and whatnot. But among the big list also lies a lot of very interesting, fun, and hidden items. So today, I figured we'd talk about that. We're gonna go over eight of those fun items added in Burning Crusade that you can too obtain right now. Most of those are just fun novelty items, but some of them have actual useful uses as you will see. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the high plateau of Skedis in Terracar Forest, you will come across these schools of fish in the lake. Most of the time, fishing in those schools will just get you some regular outland fish that you can get everywhere else. But on rare occasions, if you're patient enough, you will be able to catch Mr. Pinchy. Mr. Pinchy is a rare item which reads the following. Speak with Mr. Pinchy and be granted a wish. Maybe something good, maybe something bad, Mr. Pinchy does not know. Upon using this item, which by the way has a reported 0.2% chance to drop from these fish schools, you will trigger one of five effects. It either summons a level 70 mob which will assist you in combat for 10 minutes, summons a level 70 enemy mob which will attack you instantly, gives you a gift box with 5 healing and 5 mana potions, a buff that increases your health by 1200 and acts as a flask for 2 hours, or the best thing that you could get, a pet. The magical crawdad box containing a magical crawdad. This pet is so rare that it's actually part of an achievement in Wrath of the Lich King, which rewards you with the title Salty. So you may want to get this now if you want this achievement in the future, when classic Wrath of the Lich King is eventually released. But that's Mr. Pinchy, a funny item with a 0.2% drop chance from fishing and gives 5 random funny effects, one of which rewards you with a very rare pet. I'll definitely try getting this pet when I'm bored eventually one day in TBC, it could be fun. The next item on our list is the Orb of the Black Whelpling. Upon use, this item turns you into a Black Whelpling for 15 minutes. You can move and jump, but you cannot attack or cast spells while being transformed, otherwise the effect breaks. This item is actually pretty hidden and you gotta know where to look for it to get it. It's sold by a vendor in Blades Edge Mountains, which is actually hostile to players and is in a cave with a bunch of other hostile mobs. The way you interact with them is by killing the mobs around the inside and the outside of the cave until you get 5 costume scraps. Upon getting the 5 scraps, you can then turn them into a costume, and finally be able to interact with a vendor to buy the orb among a bunch of other items, most of which are obtainable elsewhere. But I like this orb because it is one of the few items that can turn you into a different creature in the game as of TBC, and it's always cool to use these items around in a city and get people to wonder how you did that. So go get it if you want to, it's very easy to get. Next, we have the Time Lost Figurine. Similar to the Orb of the Black Whelpling, this item is one of the few items in the game that can turn you into a different creature, an Arakoa in this case, for 5 minutes. This item drops from Terok, an elite mob which you can summon once the Shatari Skyguard reputation is added to the game, which should be added soon enough, phase 2 at the latest, I would guess. Unlike the Orb of the Black Whelpling, you can actually still fight while being transformed after using this item. And there's actually 3 models of Arakoa you can transform into. And you can actually use a bunch of emotes with it like Dance, Wave, Sit, etc. So I guess if you always wanted Blizzard to add the Arakoa allied race to the game, this is the closest thing you will get until then. Moving on, let's talk about the X-52 Rocket Helmet. This item is a quest reward from a quest chain in Netherstorm, which ends with the quest U Robot, the one where you have to protect a Fell Reaver from another Fell Reaver. Pretty hard to solo, but doing so will reward you with this item. At first, I thought you needed to be an engineer to use this item, but apparently not. It can be used by anyone. Regardless, what it does is it launches you very high in the air, leaves you with 50% of your health, and gives you a parachute effect for the duration of the fall. And unfortunately, it only works in Outland, and not even inside Outland instances, so you can't skip to the last boss of Ramparts or Underbug. The only really use I could see for this is to confuse someone who's chasing you in PvP. After you break combat, Combat, since it isn't usable in combat, or if you want a suicide button at hand. Although, this has a 30 minute cooldown, so you'd need to be under 50% health first. 
But nonetheless, this item is a nice fun item to have. On Wowhead, someone actually suggested a very fun macro to use if you're an engineer using the flying machine. It makes it look like you press the eject button. Although I would be careful not to use this too high off the ground, since the parachute effect only lasts for a few seconds. Speaking of engineering, let's talk about the engineering teleport trinkets. Those are actually fun and useful to have. Just like in Classic WoW where you had to have Gnomish engineering to be able to teleport to Gadgetzan, or Goblin engineering to be able to teleport to Everlook, in TBC you can make the Toshley Station teleporter in Blades Edge Mountain if you're a Gnomish engineer, or the Area 52 trinket in Netherstorm if you're a Goblin engineer. This trinket can be a big time saver, especially if you're not in Outland and your Hearthstone is on cooldown or something, but I feel like this is way more expensive to make than the vanilla trinkets were. You actually need a lot of expensive stuff to make these, so be ready to break the piggy bank. That being said, this is a fun and very useful item to have, and I would get one of these ASAP if you're an engineer. Oh, one last thing, using these teleporters can give you a few side effects. The funniest one is when you get turned into a random race in the game. It's always fun to see a Tauren Paladin in the game pre-Cataclysm. Moving on, we have the Illidari Tabard. This is, in my opinion, the coolest Tabard in the game as of now. There's actually two colors, and both of them look really cool. So to get this, it's pretty simple, but you'll need a group to do the quest tied to it. You first need to kill an elite mob in Shadowmoon Valley called Valzarek the Conqueror. Upon killing him, loot him and you will get the Journal of Valzarek. This will start a quest which you can turn into the Crystal Prison up the stairs in the Path of Conquest. You can then start the last quest which suggests 5 players to help you. This will start an event which will summon 4 waves of enemies followed by a boss. They're pretty simple, but it can get overwhelming pretty quickly. I recommend getting 4 other players along with you at least, and you'll probably find other players doing the same quest most likely if your server is large enough. But that's basically it. Upon completing this quest, you can then go to Shathrat, speak with a doll, turn in the quest and receive a chest which has a chance to reward you with one of those two tabards. As I said, I think those are the coolest tabards in the game as of now, and I am personally looking forward to get them on each of my characters. Next we have the Brazier of the Dancing Flames. This is a Midsummer Fire Festival event item, which I learned has been added with TBC, so we should be able to get this item very soon from June 21st to July 5th. So what this item does is it allows you to place a brazier on the ground. You can then target the mob on top of the brazier and do a slash dance to turn yourself into a fiery dancing drain eye. This is the definition of a novelty item. That's basically all you can do, but it looks amazing so you should get it for this reason. You can get this item from the Midsummer Fire Festival vendor, which should be in any capital city, for 350 burning blossoms. Now I don't know exactly how easy it is to get 350 blossoms in TBC, but I don't think it should be that hard. Oh, one last small tip for this, if you have the disgusting oozling pet, you can turn into a green dancing flame instead of a red one, just to stand out from everyone else. The last item on our list is the Orb of the Sindore. I remember when this item was added back in the day in TBC. This became my favorite item to use, because I could finally live up my fantasy to be a blood elf warrior best thing ever. But yeah, basically what this item does is it turns you into a blood elf for 5 minutes. Similar to the orb of deception, but basically always into a blood elf. Unfortunately, the item has a 30 minute cooldown, so you can only be a blood elf for 5 minutes out of 30. But it's better than nothing, I guess. Also, this item is actually not gonna be obtainable in the game as of the time of writing this video, because this is obtainable in Magister's Terrace, a dungeon added in phase 5, along with the Isle of Keldonat and Sunwell Plateau. It has a low chance to drop from every boss in the dungeon in both difficulties. Unfortunately, unlike the Orb of Deception, this is bind on pickup, so you cannot trade it on the auction house or to your friends. Nonetheless, this is a really cool item to have, especially if like 16 year old me, you always wanted to be a Blood Elf Warrior in TBC, and Blizzard never allowed you to do that. Well, not until Cataclysm that is. 
And that's all I have for today. This video was a bit different than we usually do them. I always like to try different things on this channel. It's always fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more content like this. As always, I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye for now.